and back as I always am back to front sometimes <laughs> anyway what do we got for you today well you know what one of these things is don't you you've probably got one and if you haven't you should have <laughs> this one's an American standard from 2008 and I, I changed the plate on it so it looked a bit older like me yeah wrinkled <laughs> but don't worry about that it still sounds good well like I do anyway what's the problem with these well some guys like them exactly as they come and some guys don't they change the pickups out for humbuckers or they this or they that or they you know the score if you've ever played one they're a bit weak aren't they you know especially if you're into rock unless you're Jimi Hendrix that is but these standard sort of pickups don't quite drive the amp in the way that you or I would like them to be driven well I would like to be driven so what do you do well you could get one of those TS-808s and ram that in front of your amp well that's a hey hang on a minute that's a distortion pedal isn't it so you're going to get a bit of distortion and you might not want that you might want just a clean guitar to be welded yeah so that's a bit of a problem I wonder what else we can do the more I think about it the harder it is to come up with an answer now a lot of years ago I had a Seymour Duncan thing it was like a, a, a red pedal and all it did was to increase the signal to a louder place more decibels if you will what it didn't do was distort anything it's a great pedal, but they're very rare now, and uh, you don't see many of them around. So, what are you going to do? You know, we've all seen them sort of devices that we can crank inside, like on the, the Clapton Strat. And, and that's good, there's nothing wrong with that, but that's not quite either what I'm talking about. That's more of a, a, a preamp distortion, if you crank it, and things like that. So, I had a fish around the internet. I found this thing. It's called a Bicos. Or Bicos. Depends where you come from. I'll call it a Bicos. Yeah. Micro booster. And it's got 20 decibel of clean, warm, flat audio boost with true bypass. Right at your fingertips, it says. Well, what's great about that is you can turn it off when you've had it off. And you can turn it on when you really want to do something. Sounds a good idea to me. Let's take a closer look. Okay, well, I got it out of the packet. Funny thing about this, you know, I expected this to be made in somewhere like the USA, and I'm looking at the quality of it. It's first rate. But in actual fact, <laughs> believe it or not, it's made in Romania. Romania, of all places. I don't even know where it is. Well, I do, but hardly. Anyway, it's from Romania, and it looks awesome. And it's CE approved, it says on like all them things, and Rosh compliant, which it says. You know, all them things you have to do in England and the Europe place, and, uh, you know, the Europe place. And indeed, it's got stuff on here for the USA, I think. So, you get that. He even gives you a battery. That's unbelievable. So anyway, the story goes like this. I call the company up, and you're never going to believe me. I've got Elvis on the end of the phone. Yeah, that's right, Elvis. Actually, it's not the Elvis you and I know. It's another Elvis. And he wasn't named Costello either. It's another one. Doesn't really matter about his second name, but he's Elvis, so you call the company. He's there and he'll talk to you. Hi, it's Elvis. I can't do it, I can't do it. But Elvis will know when you give him a bar. He's a very helpful guy, because I said, well, I want one of these for a, a Strat. It's just go on my website. This is it here. Somewhere there. You got it? Yeah. www.bicos or bicos .ro Well there you go. You'll know everything by the time you've been there. But anyway, I called him and said, well, I wanted to go with my Strat. The American Strat. And he said, ah oh, yeah, 250k pots. That's what you need. Ah, I knew that. <laughs> So I looked on the end of the box when it got here. It said 250k, push, push. I just said push off if it was me on the end. <laughs> but there you go. 
And he said, Type A. Da -da 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 -da. Oh, it looks good. Let's get it out and go a bit closer. Oh man, this all looks good. Well, you get your input jack, but it's not as we know it. It's, it's a little bit different. You see that? It's got two prongs instead of one. Three wires instead of two. It sounds good. You've got these two wires that shoot off to ground and input, it says here. Then you've got the third one that's going to go can connect to this supplied battery and its clip. It looks good, I don't know. Anyway, looking at this unit here. Yeah. Well, push, push, in fact. Push and push. And it's going to fit on the strap nicely. We can get that where we want in the plate. But you've got this little adjuster here. Let's see. And this adjusts uh, the amount of gain, I believe. I haven't read the instructions, I'm like you. <laughs> and you've got a couple of little uh, switches that we'll talk about in a little while. And when you flap it over to the back, well, you can see the quality. It's all first rate stuff. All very nice indeed. So, I'm going to zoom back out and we'll uh, have a look at how we fit it. That sounds like a plan. Hold on. I'm back. I never actually went anywhere. Of course I didn't. Well, looking at this, you've got to, you've got to hack a few things away on your guitar. Well, actually, not on the guitar. On the scratch plate. And this, this scratch plate on here was one I had made by uh, Fat Boy. I think he's in the Isle of Wight in England. But anyway, that looks great. So I'm not going to ruin that. Well, I'm not ruin it, but I'm not going to put that on it. I've got another scratch plate. So I'm going to flip this off, flip that on, and then we're going to fit it to this one, do the test. And then if I like it, I'll leave it on. And if I don't, well, I can take it back off. And this is a good idea if you get yourself a little secondary scratch plate, just in case it's not for you, but it probably will be, as we'll see. I've used these uh, type of products before, not internally, externally. But listen, <laughs> they make a strap rock and roll. Just trust me. Okay, well, I'm going to change this plate over and I'll be back in a second. You know I'll do that, don't you? These screws, oh, you know I'll do that. Hold on. Well, as you can see, it only took a, well, 10 seconds on the film and 10 minutes in real life to change the pit guard to one where if I don't like what I've done, I can put everything back. Save the fat boy for another day. There he is. <laughs> Great pit, pit guard. Anyway. So, let's come back and have a look at what we've got. This is what you'll have when you take the screws out and you've whipped off those strings and uh, we whip out the body. It also look probably very similar. There it is. Well, nice and simple. Let's see where we go from here. Now, when you're going to fit this thing, there's a few things you've got to bear in mind. First of all, the jack, this one on the guitar, this is a, a stereo jack, so you've got to replace the stereo jack, so you put the stereo jack where the mono one is, in that plate there, so to do that, you're going to have to desolder these wires, that's just life, <laughs> so I'll do that, I'll desolder these three, fit it in there, run the wire through, all these others through, and then we'll go a bit further. You'll also notice that on the back of the preamp board some markings, it's A, B and C. And on this board you want to take uh, this wire that comes off here and fit it on C and the one off the capacitor and put it on B. That's what's simple. You need a little bit of soldering but they supply, supply the solder, all very nice. And uh, other than that, a little bit of practice. Oh, one more thing. The reason I changed the plate is because you've got this little adjuster here. You might see it from there. We'll see it later on. And that adjuster can be set so that it's just underneath the uh, scratch plate. So you drill a small hole, tiny little hole, 
you can get your little screwdriver through and adjust the uh, the, the amount of uh, decibel gain that this unit gives you your guitar. You know, so you're not stuck with keep pulling the thing in and out. That's important to remember, isn't it? You don't have to keep doing this. And remember, when you're doing this, always fit a decent battery. Now, this is a supplied one, Chameleon. Well, I don't know about that. I'll be putting Duracell in mine. Uh, it cost a bit more than maybe Chameleon, but uh, the Duracell will make it last a lot longer. You've seen it with a little teddy bear. <laughs> I think it was a drummer. <laughs> so, like I said, first things first, what we're going to do is take this mono jack socket off. Fit the stereo one, wire the three points back onto the board. Now, while I've been looking at this, one of the things I want to point out, uh, if you fit the uh, booster into the bottom tone pot, you have to cut some of the guitar wood away. So that's not a good idea, in my opinion. What I would do, you can either fit it where the volume is, or where this middle tone is. So my plans have been updated, <laughs> I'm like that, I hate to screw around with guitars. So I'm going to put this uh, booster into the middle uh, position, which is the top tone, just so we got that clear. Okay, well the first thing you're going to notice when you've actually fit this jack, uh, the stereo jack, to replace the one you pulled out, is that it's, uh, it's, it's quite difficult to get right, and you, you can only really fit it one way. Uh, you can bend contacts and things like that, but if you just take your time, it will actually fit correctly, but it fits just one way. So take your time with that, otherwise uh, you're never going to make it fit. <laughs> Some guitars have got uh, stereo jacks, this one a standard doesn't, so I guess it does now. Well I'm going to reconnect the, uh, the board to the three wires we pulled through and uh, we'll carry on. Well as you can see I've resoldered these three. You might take them off the other end but I took them off this end. Put them back on. That's the way they go. Black, red, white. At least that's the way they came off. <laughs> and my uh, cavity here has got copper in there. As you can see on this guitar I normally put copper in there for good shielding and that sort of thing. Now I'm going to put a bit of masking tape in there just to stop this shorting out anywhere and uh, that will be all good. I've also started to remove the centre pot uh, from the guitar over there. We'll take a look at that when I've got it apart. Always remember, photograph your guitar before you start so then you've got a reference to put it back as it was before. Okay, you can see that I've removed all the wiring, the grounds and the rest between these two. And that's ready to screw out. And of course, I also saved the little capacitor, which you need to do too. So let's screw that out and move forward. And there's a quick shot of it uh, all taken out. Now one thing you don't need to be too worried about uh, with this is oh my god where do all the wires go if you go onto the Bicos uh, website bicos.ro becos call it what you, will, what you will you can actually find the actual diagrams of what you're trying to do so it's all nice and easy well it's easy if you can solder always remember that uh, you're going to need to solder on this job and you're going to actually need to put a little drill hole just about there on the uh, scratch plate or pick card so that we can allow for this little adjustment. You could actually do it so that you can't get at the adjustment but then you've got to pull it all apart and faff around later. So what they say is to drill, drill a hole about so big uh, I'm not going to do that, I'm going to drill a small one and then I can use one of those tiny little screwdrivers just to get it in there because you will be able to see it uh, just about uh, when it's been drilled. So my mentality is, well, let's have the hole as small as we can, and then it's even less obtrusive. It's not rocket science to do, and uh, we drill it at, uh, I think it's 13 mil. Yeah, I think it is. 
and uh, I'm going to do that but it's going to be a smaller hole than what they say well that's good that doesn't make any difference so it's what I'm going to do not what the B-girls are going to do it's my guitar man <laughs> okay well I've marked my little point out to be drilled right there which is 13 mil in from uh, the edge of the hole and I'm going to put a small hole through and decide what to do from there uh, they do tell you the size in the instructions and the rest of it so you can follow their instructions I'm going to do it my way <laughs> sounds like Frank <laughs> okay well, I drilled the hole with a, a really small 3 mil bit you can see that and when I drilled the hole I then fitted this and moved it around carefully backwards and forth until I could fit one of those tiny screwdrivers in the front of the guitar in the other side small as this so I could adjust that uh, that small little pot I'm going to turn it over and just show the other side now actually you might be a bit hard pressed to see that uh, but the fact is it's just there and that fits in absolutely beautifully and can adjust the pot so it's really well hidden right out of the way if you use the uh, size that uh, the company says because or because uh, well it gets a bit bigger and then you can see the thing sticking through you know you adjust it further in I'll prefer to have it like that I'm afraid so uh, we'll have a look how that comes out in a moment I want that turn pot uh, adjuster is fitted the knob you can see it's pretty much out of sight I can just about get at it down there as I said you can make it bigger but left with you that's what I did okay well that was a bit of a close-up uh, so you can see that for me uh, this one looks pretty cool uh, everything's out of the way and you hardly know what's going on unless you press the pot and then you're going to hear what's going on there it is nice and simple that's how I like it ok we've got a little bit of wiring to do now uh, I'm going to flip it back over and uh, we'll go through some of that and uh, it won't be long before we're ready to rock and roll assuming everything fits in I've got to fit the masking tape as well remember in my case I won't really show you that because you probably haven't got masking, uh, probably haven't got the uh, copper tape but don't worry about that, if you haven't you don't need the masking tape uh, in my case I do, so I'll just do that behind the scenes man hold on well, up to now, since we last spoke, it's taken me about uh, no more than 10 minutes to get the wiring in here I'm just going to do a close up so you can pause it on the uh, internet and things like that take a couple of photographs of the website too so you can see where I ran the wires and let's hope it works, it probably will <laughs> all we've got to do then is get this uh, thing back on the board string her up and away we go so there's a shot of the uh, the final jobby what we've got <coughs> is these three that came in from the pot, uh, from the uh, jack We've got this one here that goes to, to the center lug of the volume. We've got this uh, black one here that goes to ground. We've got a change of these here. This wire on the end here goes to the center lug. Second one in comes down, as you will see, up into there to spot B. This one here goes off onto the board as well to spot C. And uh, to be honest, there's not really much else to uh, to look at. I did uh, put the capacitor on this bottom tone, as you can see. Make sure it's grounded. And that's about it. I didn't bother with this thing. I don't know. I guess it works, but it'll be okay rolling around a bit in there. So I'm going to try and fit all this back in, which will be a bit of a job, I suspect. It is a bit tight, to say the least. Not these wires going where they should go. Oops. 
Anyway, from Danny Burst. And they're all basically in place. That's it. Now, as luck would have it, uh, it's the same old problem with these uh, compatible things. Two screws over. I'd have to drill it there and drill it there. I'm not going to, just in case I take it back off. And then I'm going to later. If I don't take it back off, we shall see. And there you go. That's a bit better. I've only got a white knob on here. Uh, that'll do for now. Come back to that. Okay, I'm going to fit the strings and then we're going to go and uh, tune her up. Okay, well, we've got an amplifier over that away. <laughs> we've got a volume here and the booster on this middle one, right there. What I do, <clears throat> open it up, if you listen carefully, you'll hear this. My little screw hole is just there. Let's just find it. Okay, turn it off. Turn it on, use as much boost as you need. It can get very loud. Okay, that's full boost. I'm going to back it off 30%. Push that in, there's the difference. If you push that out, you can back the volume off. Put you all that extra. Mm. Even in clean shot, this is just clean shot. Believe it or not, that's just a clean shot. <laughs> Turn it off, we're back to good old strat. See, having that little hole, I think mine's just that bit better. And the Bicos one, the Bicos one. But, that's just an opinion. You'll have your opinion, I'll have mine. Okay, I'll just play a track and drop that in and out a couple of times. I don't know what track, any old thing really. But, uh, here we go.
I'm back. Well, what do I think of the micro booster from Bicos or Bicos? It's www.bicos.ro. That's the website. Very friendly guy. I said to him, I said, uh, you've got many diagrams for different guitars. He said, yeah, we're doing for Les Pauls, we're doing for Strats, Telecast, and so on. I said, well, you're going to do the, uh, all the diagrams in PDFs? He goes, uh huh, because his name Elvis. <laughs> Hi, Elvis. <laughs> well, I get away with that, I don't know. Anyway, back to the product. Micro Booster. Does exactly what it says on the tin. It actually says here, 20 decibels of clean, warm, flat audio boost, and he ain't kidding. He's not kidding. You can really crank it out. So if you've got a guitar with uh, sort of, uh, well, strap pickups, for example, or tally pickups, uh, you're going to boost it beyond belief. Uh, but it's still clean. So I must say that how far I had it cranked up, when I hit that, uh, it was slightly distorted. But well, that's what I expect going into the front of my amps. You know, there's one thing I didn't talk about and I didn't bother to set up on mine. I just plugged it in and got on with it. I ain't got all day, so hurry up. <laughs> but it says here, inside you've got two little dip switches. Dip switch one says setting off for 20 dB gain, clean, flat boost, which I had. Or on, ah, 28 dB gain, clean, flat boost. Tube light clipping may occur depending on the input level of the battery voltage well 20 was more than enough for me matey i can tell you and switch two uh is off for no treble boost i didn't need a treble boost it was a fender and on for a 12 db treble boost uh for frequencies above one kilohertz well i didn't need to flip any of them but nevertheless they're there and they're including in the product and why not do as you will this kit actually, uh, I built some strats with rear routing, or routing, and uh, it would be really good for that because you could take the extension off that pops through the front and just use a little screwdriver from the inside uh, just to adjust the, uh, the gain if you will. Much easier than drilling a hole and getting a little screwdriver. I'll show you that in the video anyway, but uh, yeah, it works once you've set it. For me, I will it at that, so uh, it's quite good, I thought. And uh, for the actual money you pay, which is not that expensive, I think they're, uh, I don't know, less than 60 euros. That's about, uh, that's about uh, 50 pounds in real money. <laughs> or about $80 or $75 in US money, maybe. I don't know. I'm not in the USA. Now, summing up. Well, it was really well made. You got a load of instructions. And there's a load of instructions to download on the site, you know, for diagrams and things like that. I've got them over there somewhere. Uh, them are all helpful. Just make sure you get the right diagram, because some of them are very similar. And if you don't get the right diagram, you get funny things happen. Like, for example, you turn the uh, tone up, and it goes to bass. <laughs> when you turn it down, it goes to treble. Things like that. It's just a, a flip over of a couple of wires, so nothing major. I'd also say that if you're not any good at soldering, don't attempt it. You know, you could wreck a load of stuff and take it to the dealer and he'll charge you to put it right. As long as you can solder and you can follow simple diagrams, you probably will be okay. But one more thing, if you try and fit the, uh, the booster on the bottom tone knob, you know, the one the furthest away on a Strat, you're going to have to cut some wood out. And uh, most guys don't want to do that, I guess. So I fitted it on the middle one, and they do say you can fit it on the volume one as well. Although I didn't try that. It seemed to work okay. Well, so how are we going to relate this uh, product in uh, points? Points make prizes, they say. Well, I'd rate it at about, for its quality and all the rest of it, it's about, I'd give it an eight and a half, eight to eight and a half out of 10. Uh, there's a couple of things that could be more clear. Uh, but nothing major, you know, just a couple of little things, and that's not really the product, it's to do with the installation. Uh, so, 8.5 out of 10, or 8 out of 10, is a fair uh, rating for this product. If it's down in the 4 out of 10, you wouldn't go near it, would you? Well, neither would I, but this one actually ain't bad. Uh, what more can I say? It works.
Thanks for visiting my website if you've been there, www.tonymackenzie.com. There will be a review of this presently on my website, uh, showing you one or two more bits and pieces than a video can do. And if you're watching this on YouTube, well, go and have a look at my channel. I uh, must have 120 videos on there right now. Um, people are watching it morning, noon and night, just trust me. A huge amount of people. I don't know why. Maybe they want me to make a fool of myself. <laughs> I'm dead good at that. <laughs> but actually, I think it's because I am just like you. I'm not in uh, any different than you. Uh, you know, it's, it's, I just get, get the product and try it. And if I think it's crap, I'll tell you so. But this one isn't. But some of them are. Some of the products I review are horrid. <laughs> and I wouldn't go there. Oh, and one last thing. Just before you do go. If you're 39 or over, go get checked out by your doctor for prostate cancer because you might well not know you've got it. And if you don't know you've got it for a long time, you're going to go belly up. Don't say I didn't warn you. Rock and roll. See you again.